My name is Jean Schmidt. Uh, I am uh, political science and uh, I am the director of the Latin American Institute for Restorative Practices. Um, it's starting, to be honest with you, starting with restorative practices. But before that, we start with restorative justice. And uh, mainly in Peru, but also in Brazil, Argentina, Chile. Uh, and then in 2009, at the end of 2009, I organized a, a World Congress on Restorative Justice. It's where I met the president of the IIRP, we were talking about restorative practices. And uh, this opened my mind that uh, restorative justice is part of restorative practices, uh, including the aspect of being preventive, proactive, and not only responsive or reactive to uh, harm done to other persons or community. And uh, so we decided to, why not to promote restorative practices in uh, Latin America, starting opening an office in, uh, in Peru. You know, I think that uh, even Latin America is a different context, but we face quite a lot of uh, problems that many other countries uh, face in community, at schools, uh, workplaces. Uh, judiciary system and there is space to promote uh, this I would not say new but this uh, this way of uh, thinking or this way of working and uh, there is there is quite a lot of opportunities because in Latin America uh, it's quite easy to have contact with key persons and the idea is not to try to sell it but to give them that there is maybe other way than being punitive uh, because it's what in Latin America it's there are a lot of uh, violence so people ask, uh, is asking, are asking for uh, punishment. So if we come and try to uh, open or, or coming with an, another alternative, not pressing, not pushing or uh, uh, let me try to find the word uh, to offering, but they choose that uh, there is this alternative that is different than being permissive or, or punitive. Uh, it's quite easy that people are more open to listen. It's more difficult that they try. They can say, okay, let's, uh, yeah, maybe could be good. So it's easy also to have contact at a different level, local level, regional level, national level, even ministry level. Uh, it's not so easy in developing countries. Uh, you have to knock a lot of the door, or, uh, have contact, but in Latin America it's much easier. So that's why we, uh, we, we start having some key contact. People say, hey, maybe this could work, and we arrive with uh, the um, proposal to the mayor of Lima, capital city, it's almost nine million person, and she said, I'm really interested. Of course, we had a chance that this person was a member, ex-member of the child right uh, community of the UN. And so she, she is very, uh, a, a, a very important promoter regarding uh, child rights. And she said, this is what we need in, uh, in uh, our city and maybe at the national level. And we decided to, with her to try to make uh, some uh, training introduction to uh, restorative practices. And then we say, let's try in a few uh, public school in a very difficult uh, suburb of uh, Lima. And it's where we are now. I'm a very optimistic. At the same time, I'm also realistic. Uh, but I have a uh, a very positive vision regarding the near future. 
because we just had uh, like an affiliation of the IIRP, it's uh, the Latin American Restorative uh, Practices Institute based in uh, Lima. And since we start the 1st of April, we have already contact with Brazil, with uh, Argentina. Uh, when I finish um, my, um, the trip here in uh, Bethlehem, I will go in uh, Ecuador because they he heard about us. And it's, the contact is so easy that we really uh, believe of the multiply effect. And then I'm here also regarding this uh, online uh, training course. That's uh, a, a good way also to catch people, the interest of the people. And uh, I know that the staff here is working on uh, having it translated into Spanish. And I hope this will uh, be a good way to uh, spread this movement of uh, restorative practices, uh, uh, not only in Peru, but all around in Latin America. Yeah, maybe I'm, I'm um, it's, it's, uh, I, I, yeah, I would like to say it's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm part of a journey. It's, you know, the journey sometimes is a contact that you, 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 you have, you are not expecting in them. And when I did this, uh, this World Congress on restorative justice, no restorative practices that I met Ted Washtel, and uh, I say, wow, you know, yes, he, he, he agree with me, but he's, he's one step Further, we are talking about mediation, he's talking about restorative conferencing, and uh, I'm talking about uh, being reactive and cutting the circle about uh, young people in conflict with the law to avoid that commit again uh, uh, delinquency act. And uh, why Ted say, yeah, you are right, but we can be also preventing, we can be also uh, proactive. and. Uh, uh, working at school and workplaces and community levels, and I, I was really attract, uh, attracted and when I read the book uh, that uh, published uh, the IRP. I went to the training course, uh, the, the short one. I, uh, I went to Costa Rica with uh, John Bailey. Uh, we organized uh, video conferences with the U.S. Embassy in Lima with their IIRP. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning every day and uh, when I talk around, I know that people are interested about the restorative practice movement. So I, you know, I'm, I'm part of it and, and I, I hope that this journey will continue and continue, not only with me, but with other person around.